So here's an interesting data point. I have the jumper to enable an exchange line circuit in. The finders are not going bananas. And why is that, you ask? Well, what's going on here? And what was that? So what is going on here is I have a call set up from this test handset to that exchange line. So it's ringing. Uh, you can see it's, uh, it's ringing. And you can hear it clicking. Well, if you can hear that when I'm over here. And that clicking is corresponding to that AC relay, which is the ring detect relay. So, and the, the finder hunting periodically, I'm curious how many interruptions are between that. So we're going to watch this while it does it one more time. Now if I try to dial 9 from the phone, I get a busy, fast busy, a busy something. making progress. I pulled a few bits and pieces out of the system. I built a crappy little tester here that oh, there, will tell me if I have continuity to ground or if I push this little button here, there, and touch it, it'll tell me if I have continuity to battery. So I can check for ground or battery, sorry, uh, with this little guy here. All right, so I built that. And I've been poking around the system trying to understand the 
exchange line start mechanism. I finally wrap my head around it. There is, we'll call it a wire. And it's that, oh, you can be able to see it with this terrible lighting. See the red, green, blue? Red, green, blue there. That's multiplied across all the selector jacks. And that's grounded by the selector when it wants to party with an exchange line. By default, that's grounded by this here, the EB relay. The EB relay is, yeah, it's grounded by default by the EB relay, which is exchange busy which it, if there's idle exchange circuits, that relay should be energized. So if I put in this here, which actuates the mains fail relay, that also, so right now, all exchange lines are busy, not busy. You'll notice there's no crazy hunting happening. So, why is that? Well, it probably has something to do with the fact that a bunch of exchange line circuits, oh crap, that AF block, are missing. I squeeze through here. And all of the selectors are missing. All the connectors, I should say. Sorry, it's really dark back here. I took the light and I haven't put it back yet. But I'm working with this little flashlight. So what I'm going to do is drop one connector in, connector number one, this guy here, and see what happens. All right, I've got a connector jacked in. See, only one. That's good. Getting dial tone. And the cool part is I have the exchange circuit online. So let's try dial nine. It just worked. We're missing something though. Ugh, hang on. Missing dial tone. Okay, let's turn that down. See what happens. All right. Nine. <gasps> Can you hear that? That's dial tone. Let's go five, two, three, four. Oh my. Hello? So, there we go. It's the first successful exchange line call I've had with this system in mm, 18 years. <laughs> it was in storage for most of those. So that's pretty cool. So what's going on? Something, I'm guessing, one of these selectors has a problem and it's shorting that that exchange Exchange line start signal to ground. Sorry, it's very dark. I'm gonna hang up. Oh, see how I'm gonna hang up. Nothing too exciting. Back to the of course, the one thing it won't work. I wonder what happens if I dial. Uh, okay. Something happened. Made some pretty cool sounds. <sighs> huh.
Wait a minute. Did you hear that? Let's do that again. Hang on. Pick up. Oh. No. Hang on. Sorry about the camera work. Okay. So if I go on this phone and dial 8. A whole bunch of crazy stuff happens. Oh, there, it did answer me. Oh, so I can answer. What? What? So if I pick up this phone and dial eight, I can answer an incoming exchange line call. I think I'd read that in the manual somewhere. That's pretty cool. The neat thing is, is So what's happening over here? Hung up on me. Hello? All right. That's working. All right, let's do a demo. First, I will dial nine. That dial tone is coming from the Ameritech through my phone here. So I can dial Dial the wrong number. Let's try that again. Alright. Pick up a phone. Dialing 9. It's a dial tone coming from the Ameritech. Now it'll dial. is the butt set. The butt set answers. Hello. Hello? Can you hear me now? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's cut through. Alright, so that's the butt set talking to the phone. That works. The really neat one is I'm going to pick up the butt set and dial the PBX's number. You know, for this, we're going to monitor the butt set. We are. Are we? All right, now we're monitoring the butt set and we'll go. PBX, P A B X. I'm going to pick up the phone and extension and dial 8. He takes that call. Hello. Now we're talking through to me. Well, ain't that neat? I guess it's on permanent night mode without the console attached. Hmm. So, because of the way the Ameritech's set up, when I hang up, it just goes back to dial tone, and I can make another call, even though it was an incoming call that I'd received. Hmm. Neat. Uh, now if I hang up this extension, dial 9, I have two dial tones coming from the Ameritech.
One more thing I noticed, when I dial through the exchange line, you can see that IA and CE relays are, um, they remain operated for the duration of the digit, they release at the end of the digit. Now, this is, relay set's main goal in life was to just relay pulses. It wouldn't care about the end of the digit. It would just, we would just see that AE relay operate. Oh, there. I'm pretty sure the reason for the I8 and CE is there's an option for the system to have a toll restrictor. And to have a toll restrictor means this exchange line circuit needs to pay attention to what digits are being dialed and needs to know when a digit ends because if you dial one for a long distance call a toll restrictor would need to detect it and drop the call or whatever so I think that's why that's happening why there's a bit more intelligence all right now I'm done